It's day three on PDAC 2025 4, and the industry is absolutely a buzz here. How are you enjoying your first PDAC 2025? Hi, Tracy. It's been great. It's, uh, as, as you said, it's the first time here, uh, and I just hadn't appreciated how big PDAC actually is. Uh, there's something for everyone here, there's absolutely no doubt about that, and it's been great to have a few meetings uh, outside of the actual conference. Speaking of there being something for everybody here at PDAC, I was talking to Constantine Karanopoulos and he said Brazil is the place to be for rare earths, meteoric, right place, right time? Agree 100% with Constantine. Uh, you, we've got a fantastic project uh, in Posos de Caldas, uh, which is right on the border of Minas Gerais and Sao Paulo State. Uh, it's, it's brilliantly located in a brownfields mining area, and what's even more important, it's, it's a, an ionic absorption clay with fantastic grades and amazing recoveries. So we've got this awesome resource uh, that sits at 740 million tonnes right at this point in time. We continue to explore and we're continuing to develop our understanding and knowledge base of the caldera. So what that means, Tracy, is that you know, we think this thing is scalable and scalable to a significant level. It's a great place. Well, Jack Lifton really wanted to do this interview. He called me this morning and he said, path to production. What is your path to production? Pathway to production right at the moment is, in August last year, we released our scoping study. And that was the first time that we were actually able to get some financial numbers out into the marketplace. So, so that was great. We've, we've continued to drill beyond that and we've had some great drilling results and exploration results at Barra de Baku, which was just before uh, Christmas time, uh, and then more recently a couple of weeks back at Agostino, which is in the northern areas. So we continue the exploration because it's really important that we understand what is an enormous footprint within the caldera. So that's point one. Point two uh, is that we're working on a pre-feasibility study right now. So the pre-feasibility study is very well advanced. Uh, we're expecting that that PFS will come out probably within the next couple of months, certainly by May. Uh, and, and that really is just going to solidify and prove up the scoping study and the scoping study numbers that we previously put out. Of course, from PFS, it's time to go to uh, funding and look at the funding side of things. But on that point, the Brazilian government has been great and we're heading down to Rio next week uh, to speak to the BNDS, the Brazilian Development Bank. Uh, and a range of other folks to think about the supply chain within Brazil. I think that's the other wonderful thing about Brazil is that the industry that exists there can fully cope with uh, the scale of the project that we're going to deliver. Uh, and it, actually, we think we've got more than enough for Brazil and, and everyone else in reality. Well, there's certainly, I've certainly heard that rumor. <laughs> um, and speaking of that, you also have an offtake agreement with UCOR. Yes, we do. Can you give us an update on that? Because one thing Jack said to me this morning is, will they be able to provide the feedstock UCOR needs? Can you comment on that? Well, yeah, we're, we're working with UCOR, and we, we also have an agreement with uh, Near Performance Materials as well. So in terms of our product and what we're going to produce, we're about two thirds sold. To, to both UCOR and to NEO. So we've got another third that's, that's waiting, uh, but you know, our timeline in terms of the development is that by late 2027, we're expected to have the project up, uh, be in production, and of course from that, that then delivers commercial quantities. But, but in the meantime, we're going to be working with UCOR uh, with some of the samples that we've produced through the ANSTO test work, uh, and also through the, uh, uh, we, we want to build a pilot plant uh, in Brazil as well, uh, just to help us prove up the flow sheet and deliver some of that critical material that we can send out to our customers, UCOR, NEO, and whoever else would like some. Can you give us more details on the pilot plant that you have in Brazil? Well, we, we're, we're looking at the construction of the pilot plant. So the, the work that's been done thus far has been done at ANSTO, uh, the Australian Nuclear Science Technology Organisation, back in Australia. Uh, and, and that has really you know, given us a lot of confidence in the process that's been developed and the material and product that we're actually going to produce. So that's great. So we can take that information and use that to develop a piloting facility or even larger scale demonstration plant. We're working across those two things at this point in time. I think one of the points Constantine was trying to make in our interview was that the world needs to be looking at places like Brazil to solve our rare earth problems. 
Would you agree with that or can you comment further on that? Well, 100%, Tracy. You know, the Caldera has a, a, a project in that we've got great grades, we've got uh, an enormous resource and it's only going to grow. Uh, and what all of that delivers as well is a really low cost of operations and a low capital development cost. So, so with that, you know, we're sitting on the very left-hand side of global cost curves. Uh, that's critically important for anyone in the commodity space. You've got to be on the left. We're absolutely on the very left-hand side. So what that means is we've got grade, recoveries, scale and cost. So that competes with anything that's out there in the marketplace. We just need to get the project built. Well, and of course, we've watched you achieve your milestones. You know, you guys set your objectives, you achieve your milestones, your management team is amazing, your board of directors is any is completely impressive. What should shareholders be looking forward to, say, in the next quarter or two? Well, the next quarter, I think we've probably touched on it, is the PFS. We'll have some more uh, drilling and uh, results which lead into uh, an update in our resource. So the 740 million tonnes is, is, yeah, it's going to increase. Uh, so that's, that's really important. Um, a little bit more information around where we're getting to from a piloting stage. But the reality is we're ticking through all of the things that we need to tick through. So uh, in particular, the environmental licensing and the environmental uh, process that we're working through is going well. We've had a, a, a number of uh, positive engagements. Firstly, the public hearing in Caldas uh, was, was you know, a good outcome for the company. We've had the EPA uh, on site and, and working through. We've, we've done some uh, and received some approvals for some piloting uh, test mining to be done. So those sorts of things are all really important steps on that pathway to the environmental licensing. So they're, they're key things to drop as well. Well, for those of you interested in finding out more about Meteoric Resources, please go to the following website. Thank you so much, Mr. Gale, for joining us today. Thank you, Tracy. It was great.